All right, welcome. Good afternoon. We still have attendees rolling in. Uh, feel free to take a moment and introduce yourself in the chat if you would like to. Uh, my name is Emily Childress, and I am the director of the Core Peer Navigator Project at NIAPERS. So thank you all very much for taking the time to attend this webinar today. Uh, we are really excited about this project. We launched this in January of this year, and we're going to take some time to just go through the history. Um, I'm going to provide a brief history of NIAPERS and our vision. going to talk about the origination of and the need for the, the Core Peer Navigator project. We'll describe the process and what to expect from our project and then understand how you all can help us and how we may be able to help you. So we do have a very diverse audience today. So I do just wanna let you know that some of this information I might share might be um, old news for some of you or part of the work that you do every day, but because we do have this, this very wide audience base today for this webinar, um, I will be covering a lot of this more in depth than I normally would. All right, so for those of you that aren't familiar with NIAPERS, we are the New York Association of Psychiatric Rehabilitation Services. We are a 40-year-old statewide partnership that supports recovery as an expectation for all and be truly believe that people with lived experience are uniquely qualified to offer support to their peers. We are the creator of the Peer Bridger Model, the Statewide Training Collective, and the HCBS New Choices Project. Many of you may know us for our events that we hold every year, our Legislative Lobby Day, and our annual conference that we hold in September, which if you haven't seen the Save the Date has gone out for that. So uh, please keep your eye out on that. Another one of our new initiatives that I, I want to just speak to real quickly is the New York Psychiatric Rehabilitation Training Academy. This is a three-year OMH funded training for psychiatric rehabilitation providers. Uh, this training is available for both practitioners and supervisors to learn psychiatric rehabilitation principles and practices and how to incorporate them into our service delivery models across New York State. The uh, Psychiatric Rehabilitation Training Academy has a wonderful website if um, anyone is interested in learning more about this at psychrehabacademy.org. And I just want to take a second to send a great thanks to OMH for launching this peer-led person-centered navigator project. Um, our partners at OMH have been very supportive in bringing this project to light and supporting us throughout every step of this, um, really helping us guide a lot of our targeted outreach, connecting with a lot of different providers and communities. So a great thanks to our partners at the Office of Mental Health. So I'm gonna dive a little bit into some of the background around why the Core Peer Navigator Project came to be. So this is a point where, you know, I, I'm seeing in the chat that a lot of you are core providers, you can, the next two slides are, are gonna be, um, or next three slides are gonna be uh, old news for you all. You all could probably do just as good of a job as I can in explaining this. So for those of you that don't know what core is, um, first we need to understand what a HARP is. A HARP is a health and recovery plan, which is a product of managed Medicaid. So individuals who are eligible for HARPs are, uh, Medicaid recipients, 21 and older, who are eligible for a managed care product. There are other qualifying factors as well. Um, most common is recent use of behavioral health services. Uh, there's multiple ways an individual would know if they were HARP eligible. Typically, um, they would learn that by being notified from New York State or New York Medicaid Choice by a letter in the mail. Um, they can also call their insurance, their, their managed care organization to find out their eligibility status. And the core services, you know, to understand, you know, what, um, 
how individuals are eligible for core services. So they need to be enrolled in a HARP plan. Uh, for those of you that have been around for a few years, we know that originally all of these services were under HCBS or home and community-based services. And now uh, OMH has made the core services available with a much easier referral process. So the core services are the community-oriented recovery and empowerment services. These services are person-centered, recovery-oriented, and mobile behavioral health supports. Uh, these are services that were originally under HCBS, but now have been pulled out into core. A lot of um, the barriers that were identified for individuals in accessing HCBS services previously have been eliminated for core services. I included the websites at the bottom of these slides, which we will send out the slides to everyone that was registered for this webinar, and they'll be available on the NIAPRIS website along with the recording. Um, so there is more information, of course, at the OMH website. The particular services that fall under these community-oriented recovery and empowerment services are the four that you see on this slide, this slide here. Community psychiatric support and treatment. This is mobile therapy and treatment services. Psychosocial rehabilitation, right in line with our Psych Rehab Academy at uh, Niapers here. It's a skill building to support living, working, learning, and socializing. Family support and training is education and training for family of choice. And then our empowerment services or peer support, support from individuals with lived experience. So our peer navigators in this project, our main goal is to educate individuals about HARP and core services, determine if they are eligible, and then assist them through that self-referral process. But I'll get more into that. But these are really the services that this project was designed to assist individuals in getting access to. And why our project is here, uh, for those of you that have our core providers or were HCBS providers, we know that um, our utilization rates, you know, individuals haven't been able to successfully connect to HCBS or core services. Um, our numbers here are from the latest OMH dashboard from March. And as we move from left to right, we have HARP eligible. So those individuals who have been deemed eligible, they meet those qualifying factors. Our middle column is those who have actually been able to enroll in HARP services. And then in our last column where our number really dives is this is the number of HARP members who are enrolled in HARP who received core or HCBS services in the past 12 months. So this is where we really see that number drop down. And we were looking at identifying, you know, how could we assist? We know that there's been different barriers that have been identified and why individuals weren't able to access HCBS services and now core services. And mm -hmm. NIAPRS is always thinking of you know, opportunities for where peers could be beneficial. Is there, a, and with this specific scenario we were looking at, is there a way that peers could eliminate some of those barriers for HARP members or HARP eligible individuals who would, could really benefit from these community oriented recovery and empowerment services? So that's where our project design came from. So our core peer navigator project launched in January of this year. I am the director for the project and we have Amelia Green as our clinical outreach specialist. And we are currently in the process of hiring for a community outreach specialist as well. And the role of the outreach specialist is really connect to connect with all of you, to educate, um, providers, community members around our project, and that core services are available for many of the individuals that you may serve or for many of you that might be on this call. A very high level overview of the project and the process. 
is an individual would call our navigator line at 855 peer nav that's seven three or yes seven three three seven six two eight they would then speak with a navigator line specialist that connects them with a peer navigator in their region and the peer navigator supports an individual in identifying goals and connections to core or hcbs services and now we'll dive a bit deeper into each of those steps so when an individual or a potential participant calls the navigator line they're going to be greeted by a live person from 8 a.m to 5 p.m monday through friday our navigator line specialist will collect basic information about the potential participant they'll inform the caller about our project and what the process would be like and then if the individual decides to continue on if we feel that they'd be a good fit for our project we would then match the participant with a peer navigator in their region within 24 hours our peer navigator will be calling the individual usually this happens much less than 24 hours probably about an hour or two um, the uh, participant will receive that phone call from the peer navigator once a, a participant is working with a peer navigator they're going to look to identifying goals and matching core services and supports that would really best support the individual in achieving those goals we would if the individual is unaware of what core services were in harp of course we're going to do that education process first and then we'll explore core providers available to the individual in their community our peers are available to provide support throughout the referral engagement and service delivery process this means not only are our peers available to assist them through you don't know, do the education assist them through that self referral make sure they get connected to the core provider but we'll continue to do check ins and follow up um, usually texts phone calls with the individual to make sure that they don't hit any barriers after they've been connected to the core provider because we know sometimes things come up uh, maybe it's not a good match with the provider maybe another life issue came up um, that the individuals putting more priority on our peers are still there to provide that peer support to the individual even after they've been connected to the provider our peer navigators are able to provide support via text phone zoom or face to face we've gone even wider and done whatsapp and different things that you know whatever the individual needs to best be able to connect this is the way that we have broken down our regions so it's a little more local than uh, omh's five regions um, we currently have 14 peer navigators across the state we are working on getting the listing of them up on our website uh, we are in the niapers is in the process of updating our website and we also have two navigator line specialists that are lo located across the state to answer the telephone some of the project highlights that I want to share our project is staffed 100 percent by peers with lived experience of mental health and or substance use struggles that includes our leadership our, our outreach specialists myself I'm an individual with lived experience our phone line specialists our peers and as well as all of our peer navigators of course so at every step through this this process even from them an individual calling the 800 number they're going to be speaking to a peer the project is completely voluntary and person centered at, at any point if the individual chooses that they no longer want to participate that is fine um, we make sure even when someone is calling the 800 number uh, providers are more than welcome to call and get information but if you have a potential participant that you're looking to refer to our project we're going to ask to speak to that participant before we we move on to any further steps 
So we really want to make sure that this is a, a voluntary process for the individual. We strongly promote participant choice in selecting a core provider. All of our navigators have done outreach to core providers. If you're a core provider on the phone and you haven't heard from one of our peer navigators, I haven't gotten connected to them yet, please let me know and I'll be sure to get you connected to them. So when an individual does decide that they want to proceed in doing a self-referral to a core provider, we give them, we call it their menu of core providers, depending on which uh, core service they are interested in. And they'll get to choose right from there uh, which provider. There's no contracting or you know any sort of preference for any core providers. The participant will receive the full, full listing of available core providers. We truly believe that there's no wrong door to access services. And this is not just core services. Um, if an individual calls our 800 number and they're looking for um, food services or um, you know, we've had individuals call that needed to reset the pin on their EBT card. Um, you know, we we will assist individuals in any way that we can. Um, even if an individual is determined not to be HARP eligible, we'll still do our best to connect them to supports and services that would benefit them. We do have peer navigators that speak a variety of languages there, still working on getting more represented, of course. It's a very short list, um, but we do have some additional um, language services there. And the nice thing about this project is it's a non-billable service. Um, you know, we're not, we don't need to collect as much information. Um, you know, we don't, technically, someone could go through our entire process with only giving us a first name because we're really supporting and advocating them to do the self-referral, checking their eligibility status on their own. Because that's a big part of peer support is that empowerment and modeling for others to self-advocate and know that they are capable of navigating through this system on their own where there is that additional support. A highlight of some of our project successes so far, um, as of the end of last month, our navigator line has received a total of 176 calls. These were mixed between potential participants and individuals just calling for more information or those one-time resource assistance calls that I mentioned where an individual might just be looking for, for a resource real quick. So far, our peer navigators have supported 66 participants that have moved completely through our process. We still currently have about 45 active participants that are working with peer navigators in addition to the 66 that we've transitioned through. Out of those 66, 38 of these participants were successfully connected to a support or service of some sort, whether that's core, HCBS, or a non-core service. 48 of those 66 participants were HARP members. And of those 48, 31 were successfully connected to core services. Um, here I have a slide with some of our wonderful partners, some of our great peer navigator staff. Um, some of them are on this call as well. You might see us out and about um, doing tabling events um, at different um, conferences, some community wellness events um, throughout the state. So if you see our bright orange flyers, uh, you'll know that that's us. And the ongoing success of the Core Peer Navigator Project is dependent upon partners like you. If you are a core provider, we really want to facilitate that ongoing relationship with you. Um, you know, we want, we want to continuously keep in touch, know exactly what your self-referral process is, you know, if your referral form changes, if any of your services change, because we really want to be able to provide our participants with the most up-to-date information. We want to work collaboratively to make sure that these individuals are getting connected to your services in the easiest and smoothest way possible. Um, if you are a clinical provider, there could be many individuals that are coming through your services 
that are HARP eligible that could benefit from these services. We'd be happy to have you give them our phone number where we could go through checking their, st their eligibility status with them and seeing if they're eligible for these services or even just being there to get them connected to other services in addition to the clinical supports that they're getting. Family members and community members, you know, if there's anyone in, in your life or you yourself believe that you could benefit from these services, please give us a call. We'd be happy to walk you through that process and be a support for you throughout that. Here is my contact information. Please feel free to send me an email. If you have any questions, again, if you're a core provider, I'd love to get you connected to our peer navigators. Um, we can do in-house presentations for staff, um, for individuals receiving your services. I am going to look and see, I know there were probably a few questions that came up. You will receive a copy of the slides. Um, they will also be made available online at the NIAPRS website, along with the recording of this webinar. A list of the peer navigators by county. Um, we, I will have that posted along with the slides and the presentation online. If anyone would like to enter any other questions into the chat, I'd be happy to answer them. I'm going to enter two other emails into the chat. Um, we have two peer navigator team leads. Um, we have Anthony Ramirez is our team lead for New York City and Long Island. And then, let's see, making sure I spelled his email right. He's at anthonyr at niappers.org. And then John Fitzgerald, is our team lead for the rest of state. And yes, uh, Sarah, HARP eligibility is still determined by an algorithm through the state that is updated every two months. Give it just a moment, see if any other questions come through again. Please feel free to email um, me directly at emilyc at niappers.org. We also have a informational email at peernav at niappers.org. Or feel free to call the 800 number, which I am also putting into the chat now, 855 peer nav, and speak to one of our navigator line specialists. We'd be more than happy to share information as well. Hmm, I'm not sure about that, Sarah. We'd have to, um, I could get you connected to somebody um, within OMH. I would be better able to answer that question for you. Sarah, if you want to email me directly, um, and I'll get you connected for that. All right, well, thank you all very much for taking this half hour of your time to come and hear about our core peer navigator project. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me by email or by phone. I'm really excited to hopefully make some more great connections with all of you. Thank you.